Think about, you know, your smartphone or a laptop. Today you know everything about it. Every chip in it, you know where it was produced. And then you don't know anything anymore. E-waste happens because objects are no longer useful to us, so we throw them away. We exacerbate that problem by the fact that the, the way we've engineered them and designed them makes it very difficult to take them apart, extract the useful materials, and reuse them. Out here there are about 4,000 people plus working here. I, I long here about 15 years now. We found that most of them had elevated levels of heavy metals in their blood. I think not only Africa is dealing with this e-waste issue because electronic and electrical devices are part of our daily life. We simply can't provide these kinds of products for the seven, eight, nine billion people that will be on the planet in the future if we're throwing most of them away after they've been used for two or three years. Certainly you cannot generalize, you know, when you think about e-waste, it's different if you think about an old CRT monitor, if you think about a modern, a contemporary smartphone. But certainly there's a lot of value we can also get back from e-waste, and you know, that should be an incentive to recycle. I'm a professor at MIT, where I run a place called Sensible City Lab, and also design office called Carlo Society. We started looking at this with a project we call Trash Right. It was a few years ago, and we, we, we worked with the city of Seattle and put many electronic tags onto waste to follow waste. You know, we followed banana peels, we followed uh, all CRT monitors, computers, uh, cartridges, and so on. A lot of e-waste would end up at the borders of the United States, and then we couldn't follow it anymore. The first day I got here, I was shocked. You see the kind of work people are doing. They cut themselves, they expose themselves to so many things. My name is Bennett um, Nana Ekufu. Um, I'm a project manager for Green Advocacy Ghana. So the boys here normally go around with trucks. They go to each home. If they come to my home, they will definitely buy a fridge for me. Then they'll, they bring it all the way here, they cut it into pieces. They get aluminium from the casing. They get copper from the, uh, the motor found inside the fridges. So what they do is cut it with a hammer and a chisel. Then the cables found in them, they would burn to extract copper. Then what happens to the styrofoam, it is used as some kind of fuel. So if they need to process other kind of metals, they'll add a styrofoam and set it ablaze. With the soil, we all know it's highly contaminated, and the levels of lead, cadmium, arsenic in the soil keep on rising. We did a health survey of people here. We found that most of them had elevated levels of heavy metals in their blood. Heavy metals is linked to cancer and other diseases. You know, this whole place is like a commercial district. You have people selling water, drinks, others working, others going around picking stuff from the floor. So it's, it's a whole community on its own. Out here, there are about 4,000 people plus working here, and most of them spend their whole day here, so a lot of them will be exposed. You know, most people see Abu Bloshi as a waste dump. 
but it's a service they are rendering to ordinary Ghanaians. Yes, it's, it's bad, but it's a service we need. If Abu Bloshi didn't exist, what would happen to our old vehicles, our old refrigerators, TV sets and all that? We've always had the mission at IDEO of trying to connect people to technology, right, through design. Hi, I'm Tim Brown, and I'm the CEO of the design company IDEO. Back in the early days when we started, we did things like the first mouse for the original Macintosh computer, and the first laptop, and the first automatic defibrillator. The uh, complexity of the systems that support these products and services, we understand that so much better now, which is why we got interested in things like the circular economy and the need to think about products not only uh, through their cycles of use, but what happens to them afterwards. I am uh, Vincent Biruta, and uh, I'm a Minister of Environment of the Republic of Rwanda. We were dealing with 10,000 tons of e-wastes every year, and we decided to put in place an e-waste dismantling and recycling plant which has the capacity to deal with these 10,000 tons every year. Today in Rwanda, our recycling plant, first of all refurbishing uh, some computers, so far it has refurbished 400 computers, which have been distributed to schools. But we are sending plastic parts, the plastic components to plastic recycling companies. We are sending uh, the metal parts to uh, steel industries. But we are planning uh, on a second phase to recover the precious metals which are part of these electronic devices. With the help of POS, a US-based NGO, we decided to find a way of eliminating burning as a means of copper extraction. So we set up this pilot site here with wire strippers. And you see these holes are where you push the cables through. So these are the sizes of cables we can recycle. And it, it does that within seconds when it's done. So plastic goes one side, the metal comes out the other side. When you bring your cable here, it's clean, copper or aluminum, which weighs more. So the boys will tend to have a lot more money. It's caused by design, and the solutions are a design problem. If we really are serious about a circular economy, we want to close the loop. Create new notions of, of, of supply. We don't need to use so very many uh, devices. Having certain components that, that have many lives. And when we need to dispose them off, we just make sure we dispose them off where they need, uh, they, they are, there are facilities. We're still in love a little bit with the idea of beautiful products that we want to own, but maybe that's not the right model for the future. It could be that we shouldn't be buying these products at all, but we should be taking them as services so that the manufacturers have a real reason to take them back. We're gonna to have to be quite creative over the next few years uh, in order to solve these problems.